Hi, good morning. Welcome to Yarn Lane. Or is it good afternoon now? I'm not really sure. Good afternoon, I guess. So welcome to Yarn Lane. I'm Wendy Gardner and I'm here joined today by an author who's just launched a new book which is exclusive to us for a week. So this is Emma Varnum. So welcome, Emma. So <laughs> it is good, so lovely to see you because it's nice to see a person that's written a book so we can get a little insight uh -huh. into all of this in a minute. But I want to crack on because we've got a lot to show you. And you can see I'm surrounded here by my lovely little friends. They're crochet w woodland creatures. This is what we've got here. This is really lovely. So th this is the focus of this book. You have written other books and we have got them. If you want to see them, you can pre-order them. They're on the website but we will try and look at them later. But for today, it's all about woodland creatures. Let me have a look. And if you buy this book, which is $12.99, it comes signed. So it's signed, ready. So Emma, bless her, has been busy with her <laughs> Sharpie yep. signing all these books. Now, what I love in here, if you just, I'm just going to go straight to the contents look. Look at all these lovely critters. Look at them. Now, we have exclusivity for a week. So this is just from us for a week. And you have here, oh, my little frog hasn't, hasn't got his flippers on. I just love that. I just love the fact that the frog's got flippers and armbands. And I love the hedgehog because the hedgehog has got some really soft wool. So it's up to you what you make, make all these. And not only do you get to make all these lovely creatures, the, this bear in his pyjamas, he's got his little rabbit. But there's lots of little accessories as well. So we have sort of the flippers and we have the clothing. And can the clothing is it kind of like interchangeable yeah I mean if you wanted to yes yeah, so you can make from this book um, you can make any of the clothes and they can fit each of the, each of the animals other ones. so if you want a rabbit in pajamas you can have um, the rabbit in pajamas a ruby rabbit and she can have um, her own pajamas she can have her own pajamas she can have a or she can have a full wardrobe you could couldn't you totally if you're making this for a child you yes can have a full no wardrobe. i mean that one of the great things um, look at this this little bear in his pjs with his little <laughs> rabbit isn't that cute look i've got that here this little rabbit says hello <laughs> it's really sweet it's just so cute Beautiful. And then, of course, so I'm just looking at the, the lovely, oh, so that's, oh, it's Benji Bear. Finn the Frog. I love this. A bit of alliteration goes a long way. <laughs> Danny, dear. Oh, you, I mean, you've even got the, I saw those. You have got those as well, haven't you? The toadstools. Yes. Yes. So you've got toadstools. You do. But you, oh, and leaves. Yes. Lovely They're autumn leaves. So you've got those. It's, yeah. it's not just the animals. It's all the lovely little bits that you can put with them. Yeah. And all the clothing, which I think is so cute. And the photography is beautiful. Oh, look at him. He's just getting his on. He's getting dressed. They're so lovely. So really beautiful pictures. And then once we've been through... I mean, is, is he actually swimming here? Like so, and then once we've got all those pictures, then we go into the actual make. So it's everything you would need and then step by step. Now, this is all crocheted, aren't they? Yes. And would you, is there a sort of level of ability that you need to no, do well, these? Well, in the back of the book, there's um, a whole technique section. So whenever I'm writing a book, I want you to be able to feel fairly secure about um, the craft. Um, there are uh, pictures and diagrams of how to do the stitches. So it does start off right at the beginning. And um, toy making um, uses for crochet um, a Japanese um, technique called amigurumi, which is working in, in the round, which I, I'll demonstrate later on. And it makes um, toys really robust and they're great to play with. So they, t they have a kind of um, durability about them, which is, is really great for active play. So I, I'm passionate about my toys being made and played with. So most of the toys that I've created, I have a, a child in mind um, that I'm thinking about. It's your inner child, isn't it? It Let's is my inner child, inner child, yes. Yeah. But they are, they are very, very tactile as well, actually. You know, oh, you just want to have, and then they, you know, you've got nice top. Uh, so I just love this hedgehog here with his fluffy head. Yeah. Really squishy. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so in fact, I'm looking at these techniques in the back here, right the way to holding the hook, holding the yarn. Yeah. So... Of course, I'm going from the back to the front. Are the instructions in UK crochet terms? Yes, they so are. In, so yes, okay. they are. Yeah. 
so that makes it easier for those of us over here but look at these aren't they lovely and I just love the fact you've got the clothes as well they're so cute so very clear instructions oh look at this can you scale that up? You can make it for yourself, this lovely shawl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a poncho. Yeah, this poncho. I had a poncho when I was a child. Yeah, so do you remember those days? Yeah, I know. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Well, I did. Look at this. Oh, look. This is so lovely. She's so very, very clear instructions all the way through. Um, and I like the way, I know this is probably a very small thing, but it's like the way that each round is bolded out so you can very quickly see the round you're on. You know, it's very, very, very clear. And I like the fact that the photography is alongside it too. So keeps you, you know, what you're making. I, I like the way they've got bottoms in the chocolate. That's how they can sit down, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. <laughs> they, um, they are, um, I've done two previous um, toy books and those, those toys, you can interchange those um, clothes. These are slightly larger. And, and they have a, a seat so they can sit down. It makes them ideal for putting on shelf or actually I took pillow status. So uh, when a toy's got pillow status, they that's the one you take to bed and you take, and they mop up all the tears and they hear all the secrets in their ears. And, um, and essentially I wanted to ensure that this, th this range of toys had that kind of seat so they sit really nicely down. So yeah, um, they're slightly larger um, and they're definitely best friend toys. Definitely, they really are. And for any age I feel, <laughs> I, particularly, I particularly like Humphrey. So we've had a message from Christine. Um, let's have a look what she says. Uh, I love Emma's animals. I bought Crocheted wild animals. Can you tell me, is DC2 increased means it's double crochet twice in the same stitch? I'm new to crochet. Is it Christine? That was Christine. That's Christine, yes, yes. definitely. That's so um, you're going into the same stitch to increase it by one. So yeah, that's an increased stitch. And you just And in your in the back here with yeah. your techniques, does it tell you that sort yes. of thing? Yes, yes, it does. So that will help you there yeah. because uh, yeah, like me, Christine, uh, very new to crochet. Um, so it's really useful. Yes, you've got double trebles and treble, treble crochets, half treble, slip stitch, double crochet. <laughs> My goodness, it's all here very very clear in the back of the book. So that's really handy. So something because Although they they are fairly big, it's it's also a fairly small project to start with. Yeah. So you can you could try maybe making the toadstools or something as an absolute beginner. Absolutely. And then go on to one of the lovely beasties. Yeah, definitely. But we have not just bought you the book. So this is the book which you do need in order to make any one of these lovely animals. But we have actually re so Rebecca Reed has put together three kits. So the three bundles, and the, what we've done is we've got the bundles for each of the animals that have got cover place. So you need to buy the book separately. What you get in your yarn bundle is the yarn you need to, to make that particular animal. So the first one is Humphrey the Hedgehog. Oh, and he's lost his hat. <laughs> he's got a peaky cap here. I've put it on a jaunty angle. So this is something, this, this one here, I'm gonna take a ball away. This is all the wool you need. Now this is, is Serdar Alpine, this is called. Yeah. It is so soft, it really is. So unlike a real hedgehog, he's not prickly at all. He's really soft and cuddly. So what you're getting in this particular yarn bundle, is that 14 99 for this bundle? For the whole bundle, you're getting two balls of the Serdar Alpine. And then you also have um, this one, which is Stylecraft. And this one's a style craft as well. So these are all the things. So this is for his outfit. So you've got that for yourself. Come on, turn yourself around. You're flopping <laughs> over. So you've got that for the outfit. You've got the blue as well. So there's plenty of there for that. So she's matched as closely as possible to the, what you originally used. So it's not quite the same, but it's very, very close. So obviously this is for the little hedgehog. This is for his, what do you call his spines? His I suppose. spines, yeah. It's his spines, although yeah. it's not because it's soft mm -hmm. and lovely. So you've got that as well, and you've got plenty of blue, and then you've got black, which has got lots of black here just to do the little nose, so that's going to last you as well. Uh, we don't have a little orange, though. 
So use some you'll have some remnant yeah. from your stash, use, won't you? Yeah, I would use perhaps some of the green. You could even use, I mean, you could use the blue. You or could have you loads know. of blue and, and the black used for the braces as well. I yes, think, you could Rebecca. use the black for the braces, yeah. couldn't you? Yeah. So that's really lovely. So you will need to buy a few other bits to make this. So you buy the book and you'll also need, if you want to put buttons on, you'll need buttons. Um, and if you want safety eyes, you need safety eyes, which we have for you today. So these are a little pack of safety eyes. If you're not sure about putting even safety eyes on a toy for children, you're going to show a way of yeah. doing the eyes without, aren't yeah. you? And the same goes for the buttons. If you're not sure about giving it, if it's for a little child who might bite them off, then maybe don't have buttons. These are extras that you can do. We also have the uh, hand sewing needles that you need for sewing with wool. And we have a nice crochet hook. So that is the first yarn bundle. That's for Humphrey. He's, I think he's my favourite because he's <laughs> lovely and soft. So I'm just going to just going to dump him now. That's not nice, is it? <laughs> so now we have Frida Fox. For Frida Fox, look at all this. Here's Frida Fox, look. All kitted out. And she's got a lovely waistcoat, little tie and trousers. And that's the same <laughs> A <laughs> <laughs> little tail comes through the hole in her trousers. Yes. Very important, otherwise it would look quite unpleasant. Yes. So they are, if they've got a tail, there's, they've there's got the to have a hole in the trousers. Yeah. yeah. That is so sweet. So this is what you get in your yarn bundle. So again, you're going to get the blue to make the um, the trousers. And this is sort of the, uh, what colour would you call that, fawn? So these are style craft yarns, so really nice yarns. These are Highland Heathers for the waistcoat, the white. For, you get plenty here. You get a lovely yes. big ball to do little bits. And then, of course, this is his little body or her little body. And then the black for the ends of the toes and the paws and the nose. So that's that's the yarn you get if you want to make Frida the Frida, I was going to say Frida the Frog, Frida the Fox. So it's Frida the Fox. And then finally, our other kit is, it's hard to, Benji Bear, let's pop him up, up there. Benji Bear, and I love him too. <laughs> oh, look at his, so Benji Bear, look, he's sitting here in his PJs with his little own cuddly toy, which is a crocheted toy. So for this one, we're getting all of these colours. So here's, here's the bear. His, his, this is his bear body when he's bare. This is the bear bear. <laughs> and then we have his PJs. So you have the blue for the PJs. And then we have some white, which can do the trim on the PJs. And then we have a sort of ecru for his mouth. I mean, look, you've got a plenty, a nice big ball. You've got plenty there. And again, if you want to make him and add buttons and things, you'll need to get the buttons and the eyes. Um, you can make him with, oh, you could, if you've got your own yarn at home, you could make different pyjamas or, of course, you've got his pyjamas and then you could make him a pair of dungarees as well because you can just switch the clothing patterns. They fit all of these lovely creatures. So just make sure that you've got the, uh, the yarns you need to make your one and you've got the book. These are the two things you need to go for these yarn bundles. Of course, if you've got all your own yarns and you don't need any of these, these have been very carefully picked by uh, Rebecca so that they match as closely as possible to the bear because we know that's what people like to do sometimes. They like to do it as it is. So these are on the cover of the book. They're the cover stars. So we've got these as three kits. But if you've got your own yarns, of course, you just need the book here and then you can make any of these yourself and get your own yarns. But these are so gorgeous. So you'll need the book for all of the patterns and all of the instructions here. I just love the way he's just getting dressed. <laughs> or is he getting undressed? Is he being difficult? Is, is he well, being he's difficult? Been struggle, struggling in <laughs> just before bedtime. You yes. know that struggle. You know what it's like when they don't want to put their no, arms in? Gosh. No, gosh. No, I don't go to bed yet. <laughs> <laughs> so where does your inspiration come from, Emma? Um, so it is usually other children that I know. And um, I also... You know, the, the childhood stories that I knew when I was growing up, Beatrix Potter, mm. uh, Little Grey Rabbit, all of those um, stories. So I really, 
I really like making um, native animals as well for um, our woodland animals. I've never made a hedgehog before. So I was just, I think he looks a bit like David Essex or um, oh, Michael because, Ball. Yes, the, the David Essex because of the little kerchief. Yes. Because uh, I always remember him wearing that. Yes. So I, um, <laughs> so I, I um, just really wanted to make um, some animals which were kind of slightly more naturalistic and um, really represent um, some of our woodland creatures. Um, but they usually do have a person in mind. So there's usually a sort of person that I'm inspired by or I'm thinking about a child, um, maybe a conversation that I've had with a child saying, I really like mice or I really like owls. And I'm thinking about them. So, yeah, um, I have a good friend of mine who, whose daughter loves frogs. Now, I've never made a frog, designed a frog before and I just thought it would be really good fun. So, um, so I, love, usually... I love the frog and I just love the way he's wearing his flippers and his armband. He's a trainer. You've got to be careful in the water. Don't don't mess about. Um, so he's, he's just for fun. You so know, do the children that you do this for, do they know that they've been the inspiration behind an animal? Lots, do you ever tell them? Yes, lots of them do. And uh, lots of people, if, if one of the toys is named after somebody, I'll, I'll tell them. Um, my um, in my first book, uh, the cat on the front of that is my actual cat. So that's my cat, Stanley. Um, but um, Susie Squirrel, who's here, she, one of my best friends is called Susie. Um, she's dressed, I think, a bit like Jenny Agatha. Um, I'll just move in. Um, oh, yes, in, in the, the railway, railway children. children. Yes. So she has her own beret. And uh, you, yeah, so it, she has a sort of green beret. And she looks a bit like she's wearing a pinafore from the um, railroad children. Um, Matt Mole, I've got a good friend called Matt, and it just made me laugh because he's he's got rather um, jaunty. He's he's not afraid to wear pink, Wendy. I, I'm and, pleased to hear it. I actually, know. my son wears pink sometimes. And it's very it's a very a flattering colour. So he's wearing that, and it is just really really good fun. I never made a mole before as well, and lots of people have said to me really. Um, they might have a child or grandchild who really likes moles and um, would I design something. So sometimes it's people that um, I've got to know over the time of designing, people who make my toys on a regular basis, have some great um, people who contact me and, um, and show me what they've made and, and they might ask me, would you think about uh, making a certain animal or character? So I try and help them Try out. and do it like yeah. that. It's yeah. really good. Okay, so we do have your other books, so you can obviously look at those on the website. But Emma, you've got a demo for us? Yes. I so let's, let's see that, can you? Yeah, I'll show you. Um, I think, um, well, I was going to show you a number of things. Um, when I've, I thought I'd show you to start with, um, just how we start crochet. Um, I mentioned before, that um, we, we crochet for, for these toys. It uses a Japanese word called amigurumi and um, essentially you crochet in the round. So you go round and round and round in a spiral. Um, and um, what I thought I would show you is just how, I mean, I hold my, I don't know if you crochet, but I was talking to Rebecca earlier on. She, she crochets using what's called the, the knife hold. So she, she crochets like that. And I, um, no, pen hold she does. And I use the knife hold. So I tend to crochet like that. So ten, you'll, you'll have your own way of doing See it. whatever's comfortable yeah. for you. Um, I also, when you use amigurumi, I just want to show you how to do um, a, a magic ring, which people think it's, um, it, it becomes like, oh, it's really frightening. It's not a difficult thing to do. Essentially, in, in my book, I'll, any book that I write, I'll show you how to do the magic ring. You do a slip stitch, as you would at the beginning of any knitting or crochet. So you pull a loop. And then what I do, i show you, is that's the slip stitch. I put it on the hook. I just raise up the main yarn to the top, so it's kind of got a loop. And then I use the yarn and I work those first and most most of these um, animals start with six stitches worked 
into this loop. So as you see, I'm going into the center and pulling a piece of yarn through, hooking it over my hook again and pulling it through. So that's, um, this is your basic so double are crochet. are all of these little critters worked on the same size crochet hook? Yeah, I've used a 3.5, which e is my... Even for hedgehogs, furry? Um, I've used a five, I think, on that one, and I will show you that. I'll show you crocheting that um, that um, yarn in a bit, if you like. It's. It'll it, be interesting yes. to see because this is obviously different, isn't it? Yeah, I'm just but pulling that. Um, just pulled that um, through, and it tightened it, and you've got essentially the basis. That's the magic ring, and then then I will work a double crochet stitch into each. I'm going to put two stitches in. Christine earlier on when she wrote in um, was asking about that. There's two stitches into the same stitch and I'm increasing. So I'm starting off with six in the center and I'll make 12. And that's how I'm just showing you that. So this is double crochet. And that's why it's so robust crochet for toys. Really robust because nice little stitches. Soon grows though. And then I'm going to carry on working in the spiral all the way around. I put maybe a little, if I was starting off a new row, I don't put a stitch marker. I usually put a little bit of yarn, contrasting yarn generally, in. And then I can pull it out when I'm, see I'll just show you here. So that's why, so you know where you're back to the beginning sort of thing. Back to the, yeah, next row. Um, that enables me to know exactly where I am. And can you see it's not disturbing my, uh, my crochet at all. And when I get to the end of the row and I want to move it, I'll just pull, pull it out. And then it doesn't snag, it doesn't, um, it doesn't create a slight hole where the stitch markers be. It's a really natural way of doing it. And I usually use perhaps a bit of contrasting yarn um, to mark the beginning of a row. So, yeah. Um, it's a nice you work in the circle and you can see already how quickly I'm so the magic up. circle was the beginning where yep. you made the loop and then you stitched mm -hmm. into the loop yeah and now you're doing amigurumi yes we have classes of that on the Tim Stitching <laughs> shows I still can't say it amigurumi um, oh we've got a message from Nicola I can't read the Facebook I'm afraid at the moment because my tablet's not working. Um, oh, very excited, have bought the bear kit. What a wonderful, aren't oh, they wonderful, wonderful design? wonderful. So you've bought the bear kit, which is this one. This Benji one. Bear. Benji Bear, with his little teddy. Yeah, that. He's got his little rabbit in there, and he's got his own PJs. That's very cute. Is that for somebody, though? Who's that for? Have you got, have you got somebody in mind to uh, make Well, that my for? son is called Benjamin. Oh, is he? Yeah. So Benji Bear is really... That's where he's come from. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he's... Um, and I love a classic bear, don't you? Oh, definitely, yes. I've still got my very first teddy bear. Oh, lovely. So he's old. Very old. Very, 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 very old. Much That's loved, I bet. <laughs> Much loved. Oh, we have to warn you, we've only got ten of Humphrey the Hedgehog Oh, wow. We've only got 10 of Humphrey. So if you want to make him. Would you like me to show you how to do the um, the fur? Yes, I think that would be really good if you could, because I think that's, that's a bit that's a bit different, isn't it? So it'd be nice to see how to do that. That is so strokeable. It's really, really soft, you know. It is, isn't it? Um, and I just love his little dungarees. Or his little trousers with his braces. So cute. So people will make perhaps um, this is not for uh, Humphrey is is got this lovely it's, it's like a essentially a fur wig on the outside <laughs> of him. And he has got a head underneath that. Yes, he? he does. Yeah. You need to make fully make him in the parchment that beige. And then essentially you, you, you sew on his spine, very soft spine. It's not that difficult. A lot of crocheters might say, oh, I don't know if about using a, it's usually a sort of, it's called a, a fashion yarn. It's a fun, 
I don't find it that difficult. The way I deal is I feel, I was saying Rebecca, it's a bit in, like in the words of Greece, you feel your way <laughs> along, um, essentially where the holes are. Um, I've just done one, I'll just do one um, chain and I can feel at the bottom, that's where the stitch is gonna go. I feel the next one with my fingers. It's not that difficult. It must grow quickly as well. It grows incredibly quickly. Don't get too fussy. That's my, I mean, my top tip is enjoy crochet. Mm. Don't get too fussy about, oh, oh, I don't know if I got that number. Is it 11 or, t it's important when you're looking at the noses, perhaps, um, and, the, and the heads. But for something like this, you see, I'm, I'm actually looking at you whilst I'm doing it because I can feel where yeah, the stitch is going to be. Um, so when you when you started that little magic circle, was yep. that was that his nose or was that the top yeah, of the head? No, it's the top of the nose um, uh, or the top of the ears. Um, I'll just show you. Uh, there, can you see? Oh yes, I see. Um, most of it, and that it's got no seams. There are no seams. Mm. So y by increasing. Um, you start here at the nose by increasing you've got a seamless uh, piece I'm going to show you later the way that my particular designs use a specific way to make sure you get your ears in the right place and I'll show you later on but then you go and you decrease and um, I get to about here and that's when I put my eyes in and um, I fix my ears as well at that stage um, and then I will stuff the head and then follow and finish off. Um, and So uh, you've got no sewing up to do after No me. sewing up I to do. I have to say, we've sold out of Humphrey. <gasps> we have to say bye-bye. Oh, Humphrey. <laughs> oh, we've had a message from Anne. Thank you, Anne. She has said... Uh, you sold me when you said David Essex. <laughs> 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 so the book and the hedgehog I have bought, I don't blame you, David. He doesn't live that far from me, David Essex. Oh, really? I've got, I've got, I haven't said that. I don't know him, so it doesn't, you know, he could live next door. It wouldn't help. But, um, but yes, he, he lives quite local. He's down on the south coast. So congratulations if you've got Humphrey the Hedgehog. We do have um, Frida the Fox and Benji the Bear still available so what next what next so i thought i'd just show you also um this is a real this technique um i'm going to show you is is a really important one for me in terms of getting the character of the animal um if you have a look at um here she is um, matilda you see i'm really it, what's really important is that she's got really good definition in her eyes um, and often you can just get a really good um, really good character um, by um, changing the face slightly so I thought I'd just show you can you see there is Matilda um, she's um, as she's finished off can you see slightly differently I'll just get my um, there's her and I haven't shaped her face. I'm just going to show you really quickly how I do that. This is specific to the animals I make and sometimes people message me and say Emma I can't quite get the character that you do and the detail is in the books. I've added it in since the first book I wrote. Um, I added in that detail and I want you to make the best toys you can make so I'm interested in you getting the best finish you can you can get but I just thought I'd show you and um, I'll move Way. She just cast me out of shadow. Um, and I noticed those needles you were set. I wanted to nick that pack of needles. I have to say, <laughs> I don't have those. I was just like, I know, Rebecca, they're quite nifty, these. I just aren't think they? I'll put them in my handbag. She won't yeah, notice. No, they'll be unnoticed. Um, anyway, um, so I'm just showing you. I've taken the tail here, um, finishing off. I've finished off crocheting. I'm going to show you later on how I've done ears. But this is the top trick take my large needle and I've popped it out here can you see underneath the eye looks painful but stick with me um, and I'm making a little stitch now underneath the eye and I'm going to push it through 
to underneath the next eye. Can you see? And you don't think about what you're doing. Just do it. <laughs> and you pull it, and and then I'm going to repeat that back through. And just by those little stitches, can you see that you you create you pull the eye in to to each other, and, and you create a, shape. a little bit of shape, a little bit of character, and it just gives that little professional bit of definition. And then going to push that right to the back of the head again and um, can you see changes the shape entirely and just gives that little bit of definition I'll finish it off by just doing a, a few safety stitches as we call them there and you've got a beautiful little mouse do a little few satin stitches if you know your embroidery stitches for the nose in, in perhaps pink in the pink yarn um, but you'll get um, essentially that lovely defined face which is is so important so um, yeah that's uh, that's key to getting that wonderful finished character so if you're not using the safety eyes um, and you're going to just hand embroider the eyes would you still do that to pull the pull yeah. the face in yeah so after you've stitched them yeah I would do um, I haven't got black yarn here, but what I would be doing is um, I would actually use um, a black yarn and do um, a satin stitch. On the size of those eyes, some people would use what's called a French knot, which you could use. That would be a small, you need to use a lot of yarn for that. I would use a, a satin stitch, which is just going backwards and forwards over, say, two stitches with your black yarn and then pull in the eye still and you'll get a lovely look to it um, but my 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 view is don't get so hung up on creating the faces but do do it in good light and take your time over it and even though i make um, a lot of animals and i make a lot of toys i sometimes take things out and i double check so i'll put um, the safety eyes in the toy and then I'll stuff the face and I'll make sure those eyes are exactly where I want them to be maybe take the stuffing out change the space of the eye I'll take time to do that because you've done all that crochet you want the finished um, animal to look as good as you can possibly get it so that's what I would say to you make sure that you just take your time over those little finishing techniques and you'll get the toy you're really happy with don't spend all that time making the limbs and the body and the head and then um, you kind of blow it at the last minute yes but you can do that at the last minute can't you yeah yeah so that's yeah. quite easy to do we've got another message here from Gemma we have got loads of messages for you actually which is really nice I have Emma's cute crochet animals book and I love all the animals she designs. I just love the hedgehog and frog in this book. And that's Gemma from Manchester. Ah, oh, I think I, I, I know I'm that, with Gemma. you there, Gemma. They're my two favourites too. But I do like Benji Bear as well, actually. I think that Benji Bear's lovely. Hi, so, guys. what's on? Oh, you're going to show us how to put yeah, the ears on. Yeah, so um, I think um, essentially... Um, one of the key things about my animals is I've always made a hole where um, the ears are to go and that enables you when you're making one of my toys you know that's where the ears are going to go. Some people are really frightened and concerned when you're just sewing an ear onto the outside there's two really good reasons why I do it. One is you know the placement's right so for the character you don't want one ear you know Bit lopsided. bit lopsided and the other one's up here you don't want that. what you want is exactly where it's going to be so the pattern will take you to the point and then you'll use a number of chain stitches to make a hole which is ready a little sort of compartment and then you'll carry on working your crochet stitches to the number I think it's 10 stitches across here and then you'll use chain stitches to create another hole so there you go um, that tells you exactly where those ears go and then what I do is I pull the yarn through and that enables me to get a really secure ear because I'm interested in you children playing with these animals 
So you don't want ears or limbs falling off. Um, and um, you also want me to help you get the right look. So as you can see, I've just pulled um, the base of the ear through that, that chain stitch hole. And I'm now going to secure that ear by going through the, the, final, uh, the final row of that ear and through those chain stitch um, hole. And it just ensures you get that really secure um, placement and correct placement of that ear. Um, and you get, just gives you a really secure ear and we'll get lots of play time out of that um, toy. Speak. They often get held by ears and things, oh, don't yeah. they? So it's quite yeah. a good idea to make sure it's really secure. Really secure, yeah. So he's not doing lots of repair jobs. My youngest son, who actually is now 22, had a lammy, a little lamb. Oh. And uh, we, I, had to, I had to sew that lamb and I had to take him away at night when he was asleep so as I could wash him. Because oh. he just loved it and he had it all the time. I think he's still got it somewhere. Um, but I don't think he has it out in his bedroom yeah. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but um. I say, I've got my teddy. My yeah, teddy yeah. sits on a shelf in the corner. Well, you know, I think um, the absolute dream is to create the special toy that a child will keep forever, the heirloom toy. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, and I think, I'm just going to show you. See, that looks so good, doesn't it? So Yes, and nice and secure. Nice and secure. And you know that's the right place for this design as well. Um, it gives you some security when you're making one of these toys that that's going to be exactly the same. Um, and really, I'll show you in terms of look, here we go, slightly different yarn. Um, but you'll see how um, they absolutely, you get a nice, accurate toy um, just by making sure that you follow the pattern and um, it's, those ears are going to be placement. in the right place. Yeah. I think that's really good. That's really lovely. So we've got the two kits remaining um, at the moment. We have Benji Bear, which I love, and he comes There's with so his much little to rabbit. Make they, I, I think you you get a lot of yarn there. You get a lot of yarn here. Actually, there will be some left over for sure. Yeah, definitely. So you get the blue for the pajamas, the brown for the body, the cream to go round the pajamas. I've just accidentally tucked his collar in. Um, and you also get a little huge ball here. This is Stylecraft to do the muzzle. Yeah, muzzle. And then, of course, the black to do the details. And there are other animals in the book, so some of this would be you'd be able to use for some of the other animals. Just tuck his bunny back there. Or even just some of the clothing or something yeah, you no, could totally. use that for. So some, there's plenty there to do that. So that makes you this. And we do, we are, we have got the safety eyes on the website. Oh, no, we haven't. They've sold out. Sorry about that. Uh, we do have the toy stuffing. Yes, we do have toy stuffing. Um, if you haven't already got that, you do need toy stuffing to fill them. It's so is it up to you how firmly you stuff? Yeah, I, I do it little by little. You don't want it so firm that they're not cuddly. Um, you want to ensure that each limb will move as well. When the key thing is um, making you sure that you put the stuffing in little by little into the face. Yes. Um, and um, don't just take a big wadge. The, the, the stuffing you've got is really great quality stuffing there. That's a lovely quality. And it does actually matter because when you're washing, where, if you wash a toy, if it's good quality, it'll keep its shape, it'll keep its... Um, firmness bad quality stuffing will, lump, will, will get lumpy yeah so um it does matter but just take your time little by little putting it in um rather than a big wadge which will then the air will reduce and you'll and you'll and it will, the toy becomes saggier um but don't overstuff a toy so that it loses yeah. any of its kind of cuddliness that no, needs to be cuddly definitely and you can wash this Yes. So all of these are washable, which is really important with children, isn't it? Yeah. Just to refresh, you know, you can put them in the freezer. If you put them in a bag in the freezer, and it, it sort of, it's a good way of getting rid of dust. Oh, wow. So you don't have to always wash. But we also have Frida the Fox. 
little our little foxy again jaunty little fox here with the little scarf i love the little scarf so with this one we're getting uh one two three four five six balls so you're getting the blue so it's not exactly the same blue for the trousers it's a lighter blue but it's very similar so we get the blue for the trousers um, we get this is this is Starcraft Highland Heather. We also get the Ecru, would you call? Yeah. Um, for the waistcoat, um, and then we have white for part of the face, and then of course we've got two balls of Serdar Country Classic for the body, and then black for the paws and the nose and little bit of mouth. So that's really nice. You've got all the and what's quite nice is that the, what Rebecca's done is she's actually got a mixture here to sort of get the mix that you need. So if you haven't got these sort of yarns at home, this is really quite a good way of getting them all. $14.99 for that pack. You do, of course, need the book because it is just a yarn pack. Um, over half the stock has gone already. With Frida, you could make a polar bear using that white yarn, using oh. Benji as, as, you know, yes. if you bought the Frida pack, you could make a polar bear for Christmas. I know my, my yarn people, they, they get ahead of, I know <laughs> this seems like a weird thing to say, but they get ahead. Of get ahead making. of time, yes. Um, you'd make a polar bear, perhaps using the Benji pattern, but with the white yarn. Yes. You can make, um, once you made the waistcoat, you could make um, another ruby rabbit, maybe with that lovely Highland Heathers, um, the beige. So I'm I'm looking at that yarn pack and thinking, well, that's incredibly good value. <laughs> it is, isn't it? It really is. So I'm thinking, fourteen ninety nine for all of these balls of yarn. Three, so it's really good. You can make about three toys with that. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so the book we've we're sold out of half the stock. And remember, they are signed by Emma, so there's going to be a signed book, and they're exclusive to us at the moment. So if you want to get it home and start crocheting, now's the time to do so. To get to get a book signed, I think makes it much more special. And we do appreciate it because I also know it's quite hard. <laughs> you, st you start off signing and it's okay. And then you st and once, you, once you've done 50, 60, 70. So but oh, it's a pleasure. But it's nice because yeah. you know, it's nice to share, to share that. So we have got those two kits. And of course, we have still got the lovely needles that I'm going to have to keep away. Yeah. Otherwise, she's going to nick them. I'm going to nick them. Got to watch her. They're only one ninety nine. these needles. So they've mm. got sort of... Loop, big loopy eyes, so it's going to make it really easy to thread, really handy. And we have the crochet hook. Uh, is it the 3.5? Yeah, three and a half um, centimetre, no, millimetre. Millimetres, is yeah, it? Yeah, crochet hook. Yes. Unfortunately, we don't have the eyes anymore. Um, so we're eyeless. But, oh, we do have two of your other books as well. Let's have a quick look at those. Did you say that you could show us how to do an eye without using the eyes yeah i can get hold if I, of um if i can use a bit of the black yarn maybe um oh i can use this pink yarn we can use pink can't yeah, you yeah 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 let's have a look at these whilst you get prepared so what we have here is cute crocheted wild animals and cute crocheted animals this so the animals was the first one so the animals was the first one that's emily rabbit the, these those are smaller in size and they don't they don't have the bottoms that sit down um, emily rabbit and, and nancy bear and um, stanley the cat who is my cat oh yes and um, katie katie um cat as well is named after one of my friends so uh jack rabbit as well so all of the clothes i'm trying to i created clothes that children in, in Britain would wear um, so yeah that's and um, so what size are these so they're slightly smaller and we've got some um, up here I'll yes just, um, if I uh, not hugely smaller not hugely smaller but no um, can you I see? was just thinking yeah could you use like your duffel coat and the dress from here for the bigger ones would they fit do you think um i if don't think the duffel coat would fit on so you'd have yeah you'd, you'd have, have to, to make the smaller bears for that smaller but yeah so but what the difference is that these ones are standing and um actually um the new ones have got seats to them so yes um they're slightly different shape and slightly larger but um all of the t all in those two books all of the outfits are interchangeable 
So, so like they are in yes. this book, but interchangeable for all the animals in the book. Yeah. So if you bought um, cute crocheted animals, um, what I did, um, for instance, cute crochet, if you made Emily or Stanley the cat, you can see the pyjamas that are on the front of the wild animals. Those pyjamas would fit Stanley the cat. All oh, right, so these yes. two books, the clothes will yep. fit each other. Absolutely, yeah. So that's quite nice to know because I, I mean, I think they, they work so well together, don't they? I love these elephants, aren't they cute? They're yeah. so beautiful. <laughs> the elephants are behind me, I think. Um, uh, yeah, so. Uh, I like the fact these ones have got little pants. Lucy and Fred have pants on. They do. I'd like to see oh, that. I know. They're very nice and they're decent. tidy. Yeah. They're so cute, aren't they? So this is the um, this is the animals one I'm just flicking through. Sorry, was I confusing you there, Kat? This is the animals one. Just and again, it's got all of the um, instructions in here, very clearly put out, and you've also got some techniques as well as before to help you if you're quite new to all of this from sort of getting started onwards. With the new so book, as you mentioned, um, I've put in a couple of projects which are just starter projects, for instance, the toadstool. Have a go at making that with some spare yarn that you've got, just to get your eye in, make sure you practice. Um, and these make great little ornaments for Christmas, for the tree, yes. um, or even the autumn. And I think if you were making something, a toy for a child, they are great little playthings, really. Yes, to go so, with it. Yeah. So that's why we did that. Um, so yes, um, I'm ready to go. With oh, could you? Because we're running short of time, no, so I think fine. this is important to show. So I just brought some black yarn. I tried to align an eye with the middle of the ear, um, and that what I would do is is actually go over um, maybe two um, two or three stitches. Go up a row as well and um, do what's called a satin stitch and you can see already um, you'll get quite a good coverage um, and you get there you are it's about six stitches and um, there you are nice little eye oh see that's good so if you're a bit concerned if you did, if you didn't get the eyes that the yeah. safety eyes and you're a bit concerned you can always do it like that little black eye and, and you make the snout the same way really don't you yeah definitely so the wild animals book um just want to mention this one we have done this one previously mm -hmm. and you can go on the website and you can buy some kits to make which ones did you say the elephants the elephant couple on the front in their in their nightwear. So you get, sorry, what is that? Nineteen nine. Oh, you put it up. Thank you. Nineteen ninety nine. So you get the kits to make those. But again, you do need to buy the book separately. Um, if you just type elephant in, see Emma's there cuddling <laughs> her ele elephants. And we also have a yarn pack for the panda or zebra. So it's the same yarn pack for both. Oh, you can make both. Yes, you can make yes. both out of all the yarn you get for nineteen ninety nine. My goodness, mm. I love the zebra. He's got he's got his um, mane down the back, hasn't yes. he? Yes. Um, he's got yeah. He's called Jeff, and he's got his mane. <laughs> he's in an he's in an aerobics outfit. He is. He's got a little yoga bag. I like his little boots. Yeah, he's, he's got his yoga bag. So, have you been inspired today? Do take a look at these books. Have a look at all of Emma's books that we've got on the website. We've got all three on the website. And do remember, today, our launch of Woodland Creatures is today. So these ones are slightly bigger and they have shaped bottoms so that they can sit nicely. So he sits, behave. <laughs> so they can sit on the bed and wait for you or they can sit on a shelf um, or they can sit on the settee. They're lovely, and and the way that you've done them, and then is it the, the arms? Are they sort of done the same sort of way, where you leave a hole and put them? Uh, yeah, through? you can crochet through the arms, through the top of the arms, so to make know, it yeah, nice, and, nice secure and secure. Because secure, yeah. a lot of them will probably be mm. held by one arm. You want them arm. to go on an adventure, do you? You do really? exactly. They've got to go down to the woods today. Exactly. You'll be sure to have a surprise. Picnic. <laughs> 
but don't forget it isn't just the three bits we've we've just picked out i say we this is a royal we again rebecca has picked out three of the lovely patterns in here to do as kits but of course you actually have a whole load in here um, I'm just saying a whole load because I'm not sure how many. Do you know how many? Uh, do I need I to don't count. Know. Is it ten? Uh, I one, think. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Ten little animals, but don't forget you've also got all of their little clothes as well. So you've got ten little animals and all of their little clothes. So these are these are good for beginners because you've got the get started techniques at the yes. back of the book. So that's going to really help you. Um, and it's all very clearly illustrated. Look, they're, they're, they're all cuddling each other. This is before COVID, wasn't it? Yeah, yes. This is before COVID. They are very, so they're allowed they're to cuddle. They're all in a bubble together. They're all in a bubble. Woodland bubble. <laughs> um. Oh, I love that picture of you. That's really nice. It's a little bit about Emma and where she started and what she's done and then all of these beautiful things it's just all these simple techniques as you've just said how to shape the eyes and it makes so much difference by doing that yeah I d there's all of them i now now i've started write, writing books i now read a lot more of the information at the back there's lots that we put in there to make try and ensure you get a really mm. successful product or a successful toy at the end so um, yeah, do read the back because we put lots of information, top tips and hints in there. That's something to do, isn't it? When you sit with a cup of coffee oh, and you're browsing through it. your book, you can have a look yeah. and see what you've got here. Aren't these so cute? I like this. So this, this is like a little pot, this yes, toadstool. Yes, she, because she'd, she'd, she'd actually hide her nuts, wasn't she, in that? You ah, so she's, she's hiding them in yeah. her toe because yeah. she's a squirrel. What's her, what's her name? Susie, did Susie you say? Susie Squirrel. Susie Squirrel. So it's all the little details. You've even got little acorns. Yes, so you can pop them in. So you it's can all make part acorns. of the play. Yes. Creating a, a fun thing to play, to, with. to play with. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. Oh, and the tail. Where's Oh, she's there. Yeah. She's got a fluffy tail. She's got a lovely fluffy tail which uses um, kind of uh, a chain stitch um, and it creates loops so she's really really sweet and I've um, put a sort of an angora through with a mohair through with the actual yarn that we've used so it's slightly fluffier but it's essentially like a sort of um, a pyramid using um, chain loops um, so yeah she's um, very fluffy and she's just wearing a little apron so her tail pokes through as well. Oh, you've got to Otherwise, yeah. she'd be lifting her dress, and that exactly. would not do. Exactly. That really would not do. We're coming right to the end of our hour, and it's been absolutely fantastic. Thank you for sharing your creatures with me. They're gorgeous. And for launching your lovely new book. I hope you feel confident to come back again. Well, it's lovely to meet you, Wendy. And Thank you. you for making me so welcome. And it's been lovely spending time with everyone here. It's great because everyone's so enthusiastic about Absol crochet. Oh, definitely. I mean, I, these are absolutely gorgeous and so cuddle cuddlyable. Cuddlyable? One, oh, one final question for you, Emma. Oh, what, oh, yes. What's the angel policy on the makes from the book? So how do you feel about people making them to sell? Should they not or can they? Oh, um. Over the years, I've actually got a lot more kind of chilled out about it. I think so many people make books, um, make toys to sell for charity and for hospital projects. And um, it, obviously, large commercial, um, if you were a large commercial toy producer, that would be a different thing. But I have no problem with people uh, making individuals. individuals. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, and I always like to see people's makes because it's just so delightful to see people making your toys um, and making your products from your book. So do tag me in, please, um, on Instagram, Emma Varnum UK, uh, or um, on a Facebook too. Uh, just lovely to see people's makes. It is. It's lovely to see how they've created yours because it would be slightly different. Yeah, right? totally, always is, totally. Which is what's so pleasant and really yeah. lovely about it. Well, thank you for that. That is good to know because, as you say, people do like to make them for charity yeah, fairs absolutely. and things like that. Um, and especially as shows are opening up again. Thank goodness. So congratulations to everybody that's bought it, who's bought the book. Don't forget it's signed. It's exclusive. Um, we are getting to limited stock now. So the next batch won't be signed so what we've got now is but after that it won't be um, so we've still got a few of the Bertie uh, the Benjamin Bears 
and the lovely little fox. So do have a look on the website for those. And our yarn lane is back on Friday, which with John Scott and Wendy Orlando. She's going to be doing illusion crochet, which sounds intriguing, doesn't it? So we have to watch that and see what that's all about. There's no crochet at all, it's just a needle pretending. <laughs> that's just the illusion of it all. We'll be back on Sewing Street tomorrow morning at eight o'clock, so do join us then. Bye for now.